Hello interwebs, welcome to a Let's Fix Computers. It's time for another MacBook Air that doesn't turn on. We have an orange light on the charger, well green light that turns orange, so there is some life there, uh, but it does not turn on. So let's get the back cover off. We're going to do an inspection. Oh, this has the wrong screws in it. Right, so this is a mail-in job. It has already been looked at by another computer shop, which is the first red flag. Um, apparently they sat on it for two weeks and then didn't do anything with it and shipped it back with a screw missing and also half the screws being incorrect for this laptop. Good job, guys. Don't get me wrong, the, the two-week wait, I know the feel. I'm horrifically behind schedule 90% of the time. However, give the person the right screws. Right, this looks pretty tidy. If it has been disassembled, it was reassembled very well, which is a good sign. However, based on the fact that it had the wrong screws in the back, my guess is that it wasn't disassembled. <laughs> um, let's just do some quick idiot checks. So, you know the dance, everyone. Multimeter on, voltage mode. PPBus G3 Heart, which is on this big inductor here. Or the fuse. The fuse is, all ah, the fuse is also good. All right, nothing coming out of the battery there. Let's disconnect the battery and get the charger plugged in. All right, 8.6 volts. All right, PP bus G3 hot is up and it is at the correct voltage. 8.6 means it's on and the SMC is running. Um, we also need to check PP3V42. Um, however, we already know that that will be okay because PP3V42 is required for the charger light to come on. Um, however, for good measure, we'll find that down here. There, I think. Oh no, that's charger input. Uh, I forget where it is. SMC reset, there it is. Uh, so SMC uh, power in 3.42, there it is. So the two basic rails are there. Uh, so something else is preventing this from turning on. It has power to the right places, but there is something there that is making it go, I don't want to switch on because I'm not ready. So uh, let's pull up the board number and the schematics, and we'll start going through the diagnostics on how to figure out why this doesn't want to turn on. Yeah, based on the um, the double-sided tape on this fan and the way that the little rubber gasket is sealed against the fan and stuff like that, this thing has never been taken apart. So I'm guessing the previous shop that looked at it, if they did take any measurements at all, they immediately said, no, we don't know what we're doing and gave up on it. So... I'm inspecting things as I take them out. This laptop is remarkably clean. There is not a speck of dirt on this thing. And that's not in a someone has done a really good job of cleaning it up kind of way. It's just a very well kept laptop. Probably explains why the customer was um, quite happy to take it to multiple places and mail it in to me. Because they clearly care about this laptop, which is a refreshing change, quite frankly. A little bit of dirt on a computer is not out the ordinary, um, but a lot of people really, really don't give a crap about their device, which is, you know, I'm not saying that everyone has to be in love with their computer, but if you don't care about your laptop, then why should I, you know? Oh, 
Oh, hello. Well, there's your problem. So with the board out, you know, here's the SMC, you know, here's this area. Look at that. There's the USB port. Even the USB port is clean. Look at that. This thing is mint. Except for that. What the hell happened there, man? It's just a single spot of water damage on that chip. That's over near the BIOS chip there. That that capacitor has gone nuclear. That's gone. That's burnt out. Uh, and it's made a hole there. How did that liquid get there and not leave a mark anywhere else on this thing? Well, at least we found our issue. Um, all right. I'm going to carry on getting my coffee that I've been doing between uh, scene cuts here. And we'll get those schematics up. And we'll just see what this is, what it does. And we'll see if it's still alive. Luckily, that capacitor's dead. That's kill that capacitor. If we change that capacitor and also... Uh, the one next to it, that guy there, that guy doesn't look too happy either. Uh, if we replace those, that's probably going to solve our problem unless this chip is dead. If this chip is dead, that's going to make my life a lot harder because I'm going to have to get a replacement one. But, fingers crossed, this might just be as simple as, look at that, just a single spot of liquid has zapped this board. Hmm. So, this board is an 820... 00165A and I'm going to open up Flexboard View. Shout out to Paul Daniels for writing Flexboard View and supplying me with a license for it so I could check it out. Super good. Uh, open Board View is really good because it's free. Flexboard View, it is, there's so much more quality of life with it. If you do this professionally, highly recommended. So, zooming into the top of the board. The chip in question is U7600, which is our 1VO5SO rail by the looks of things, judging by the list of connections it has. And that is the main capacitor for PP1V0.5SO. And the capacitor next to it looks like a reference rail coming in as well and that indeed is the 1VO5 SO regulator uh, and the capacitors so that's so that's 7601 and 7650 which is 7650 down the bottom there and 7601 up the top there very good Cool. So let's take those capacitors off the board. Um, and the chances are the board will start without them. So we can actually use that to determine if the chip is OK. So let's do that. OK, flux. Hot air on, 450 degrees C, maximum airflow. It's a MacBook motherboard, so you give it the beans. And you try not to blow all your flux away. This one. You know, I'm going to check that other capacitor just to see if that's okay. Because I don't have... I could find a replacement for that one. However, just for posterity, let's just see if that's solved the issue. Because that's probably it, to be honest. I'm going to bash that with some alcohol and a toothbrush just to tidy up a little bit. And I'll plug the fan in just so I can see when it's turned on. Obviously, we've got a heat sink on there, so we're not worried about cooling. But the fan is our clearest indicator as to what the laptop is doing. 
Same reason as to why I have a fan on a, on a desktop CPU when I'm doing no post diagnostics. A lot of people go sort of, oh, you're just running without a heatsink. It's like, you can do that. But the CPU fan gives you a lot of telltale information about what the system is doing. So it's actually very handy to have it plugged in. Not because the thing is going to burn out, but just because you know when it's when it's working. And go. Ba -ba. And it is staying on. Easy peasy. Here we go. Uh, right, let's replace that capacitor, put this back together again, and we win. So the capacitor in question is a 10 microfarad, 10 volt capacitor. I really should keep these ones in a separate bag, just because it's the same ones that I always reach for. Oh, they're not even in the bag, that's why. Here we go, 106. So 106, that's 10 and 6 zeros, which would be 10 microfarads. So let's stick one of them on the board. This guy might be a little bit on the large side, I think. Was that an 0806? No, it was a size down. This capacitor is slightly oversized, but we'll make it fit. It'll be fine. <laughs> it's a big chunky boy. If anyone asks, I'm uprating the voltage rating for it. This is um, the difference in size for capacitors is typically capacitor size is capacitance. Uh, it's a trade off of capacitance versus voltage rating. Um, so w the capacitor that we took off uh, was a 0603, I think, the size down from this one. Um, and it was the same capacitance, but it only had a voltage rating of 10 volts, whereas this, in all probability, is probably a 20 volt one. Um, however, the capacitors, the volt being over spec for voltage is fine. The voltage spec on a capacitor is the maximum voltage it can endure, not its working voltage. So over specking capacitor is fine, although uh, if you start getting into the realm of ESR and stuff like that, it gets a bit muddy. So I am grossly simplifying things, but for basic bypass capacitors like this, not super important. Anywho, uh, I'm just warming up my soldering iron. We'll reflow those pads, get this guy on, and we'll be reassembling. Right, airflow down, four out of ten. Now we just let that guy flow into place. There we go. He's a bit of a chunky boy, but he's fine. He's going to do his best. Let's do another quick check. So we'll just spin up that fan and make sure it still spins. We've no reason to believe it won't, but I like to I like to do tests along the way because uh, if it doesn't work now, we know there's a problem with that um, with that capacitor. Whereas if we put it together and then it didn't work, we wouldn't know if it was an assembly problem or that capacitor was no good. Bam. Good. And it's staying spinning. And we should see that fan will start going up onto high speed in a sec. There it goes. So the fan is now ramping up to panic speed because the board has started up and it's not detecting all of its sensors. There's a thermal sensor in the trackpad. So with no trackpad connector, we'll see the fan spin up to high speed. So that tells us that the, the board is behaving how we would expect it to, is the important thing. This affair down here where you put in the wireless antennas can be a bit of a pain when you're not very familiar with taking these apart. So the trick is there's a tiny screw that goes on there and just anchors the heat sink to the um, chassis. So you've got to make sure the antennas are above that and not trapped underneath it. And then these wires, you need to get these underneath the rubber. And there's a channel at the bottom of the chassis that this then goes into. So I'm just using some tweezers and whatever else I've got onto hand. 
just to guide into that channel. If you can't get it in there straight away, just try getting the cable a bit further down and getting that into the channel. So then it's not trying to jump out. There we go. And now that cable is nice and out of the way. And when we put the back cover on, it won't pinch the Wi-Fi antennas. Remember with your fans, you've got a short boy that goes on next to the CPU so it doesn't drill through the motherboard. You've got the tall hat boy that for some reason or other just has a really tall head on it. That goes over on the I.O. board. And then you've got the long boy which goes through the bottom of the fan. How to fan with Adamant IT. Eh. There we go. Everything connected, everything connected. Nothing else on the bench, nothing else on the bench. Looking good, looking good. Back cover on. And let's have a quick rummage through these screws and make sure that we're putting in MacBook Air screws and not MacBook Pro pre-retina screws. So the difference is uh, the correct MacBook Air screws should be the focus. The correct MacBook Air screws will be these um, uh, pe five point pentalobe screws. Whereas half the ones in here are Philips double O, uh, which is for pre retina MacBooks, so unibody. And they do fit, the thread is the same. Um, there's an argument to be made that, uh, um, that it would be better to swap them out for Philips ones, just so you don't have the annoying security screw in there. Um, however, that's not what we're up to today. So I'm going to rummage through my desk and find some MacBook Air screws. If not, I will have a pack of them somewhere. If you run a computer shop, I would strongly recommend jumping on eBay and buying just a spare set of MacBook Air screws and a spare set of MacBook Pro screws and just putting them in your spare screws collection. And if you don't have a collection of spare screws, then start one. Um, buy one of these. Um, I'll show a picture of it on screen now. Get yourself a setup like I have, where you're just collecting any spare screws you've got and sorting them by brand. And that makes your life easier. And then if you accidentally drop a load of screws, because quite possibly um, whoever was working on this accidentally dropped all the screws on the floor, which is why they don't have them. <laughs> And if that happens, you've got spares. That's the thing. Being good at your job is not about never making a mistake. It's about being able to take mistakes in your stride. I'm sure there's going to be some smart asses in the comments who are just like, I never make a mistake. Power to you. Power to you. I, however, am human. I literally just dropped a screw. Give me that chime. That's a happy noise. There we go. We're done. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. As always, my support links will be in the description down below for Patreon, Discord, Twitter, and Instagram. Um, Hope you found it interesting. See you in the next video. Thank you all. Bye for now. I should do. I think that might have been a bit of a leering smile. A bit of a... Uh, I hate doing thumbnails, but you got to play that game, man. <laughs>